Documents seen by the BBC that are said to have been hacked from Chinese police computers show that Uyghur prisoners in the western region of Xinjiang are shot on sight if they're caught trying to escape. Thousands of photos shed light on a secretive system of mass incarceration. The Chinese government has dismissed as fake news claims that Uyghurs are arbitrarily detained in the region. Our correspondent John Sudworth has lived and reported from China for the past nine years and we can speak to him live now. John, welcome to you. Tell us more about what you've discovered. Well, Samantha, uh, this is an unprecedented uh, data, data breach, both in terms of its quantity and its quality. Uh, these documents uh, were said to have been hacked from a number of police servers inside Xinjiang. That in itself, of course, is unprecedented by an anonymous source who then passed that data to uh, a Xinjiang scholar, an expert uh, in studying Xinjiang based here in the US, who in turn shared those documents with the BBC. And although the source is unwilling to reveal anything, the original source is unwilling to reveal anything about their identity or their whereabouts. The BBC, working with a, an international consortium of journalists, has been able to verify key parts of this data, this really diverse set of data in spreadsheets, in photographs, in uh, the police documents, as you say, and in, and in the secret speeches given by senior Communist Party officials, all of it pointing to new, compelling evidence of the mass incarceration of a people viewed as a threat marked out by the Chinese state as disloyal because of their ethnicity, their culture, their identity and their faith. These are the faces China never intended us to see from inside its system of mass incarceration in Xinjiang. The government has long denied its running detention camps for Uyghurs, insisting instead they are vocational schools for willing students. The photos, almost 3,000 of them, show the reality of how whole swathes of Uyghur society have been swept up person by person. The oldest was 73 at the time of her detention, the youngest, just 15. <laughs> the Uyghurs, with their Turkic language, Islamic traditions and roots in a region with a history of separatism and violence, have long faced cycles of tightening government control. And with mounting criticism over the camps, the authorities have taken journalists on tours, showing them Uyghurs celebrating their culture and, they say, being guided away from extremism. Yes, this is classified internal government information. The files said to have been hacked from police computer servers in Xinjiang by a source whose identity is unknown were first passed to Dr. Adrian Zenz, a Xinjiang scholar who in turn shared them with the BBC. And they raised serious questions about China's narrative. You have police officers in heavy riot gear standing next to some of the men. Some of the men have their arms in a funny position uh, as if they were handcuffed. So this is really very powerful about the image material. And I was looking through these images on my laptop in the living room. I had to get up and go somewhere else and take a break. I was overwhelmed. The hacked files also contain hundreds of spreadsheets, row upon row of draconian jail sentences, often targeting expressions of Islamic faith as a parallel method alongside the camps for detaining Uyghurs en masse. Just for growing a beard, Tursun Kadir was sentenced to 16 years in jail, his chosen expression of Uyghur identity forcibly removed. By speaking to members of the Uyghur diaspora in places like Turkey, the BBC has been able to verify the data, showing it to contain real people. <laughs> Mahmut Toti, for example, knew his eldest son had been jailed, but the database tells him for how long? 15 years for terrorism offences. <laughs> Although, as evidence, only his son's devout Islamic faith is listed. In response to questions, the Chinese embassy in the US issued a statement saying that in the face of the grave and complex counter-terrorism situation in Xinjiang, the authorities had taken a host of decisive, robust and effective de-radicalization measures so that people could live a safe, happy and fulfilling life, although there was no attempt to address any of the hacked data directly. 
It includes these images, once again from deep within the system, that appear to offer further evidence of the harsh detention and indoctrination of a people, not for what they've done, but for who they are. John Sudworth, BBC News.